in the heart of the Niger Delta, where the delicate mangrove ecosystem thrives, an enigma of colossal proportions has emerged. I am Beto Basinyan, a drone pilot and a technical advisor working on the Niger Delta mangrove restoration project. Join me as we delve into the heart of a captivating mystery that has baffled experts and ignited imaginations. It all began during a routine aerial survey. My drone captures something unimaginable. Intricate straight lines weaving through the mangrove wilderness. The lines, stretching for miles, defy natural explanations. Rivers, hills and valleys pose no obstacle to their unerring course. We've traced the existence back to 2002 through available satellite imagery, unveiling a puzzle that spans over two decades, maybe even more. I brought together a team of experts in geography, GIS and drone technology to unravel this mystery. Our investigations only deepened the intrigue. Even experts outside our field have been intrigued by these lines. What we are looking at are perfectly shaped lines. And I have, I cannot naturally explain this. Could they hold the key to understanding the ecosystem's health? As the journey continues, one thing becomes clear. These lines are more than just a curiosity. They hold the key to a deeper understanding of the region. We are embarking on a documentary that seeks to unveil this mystery, a captivating journey that transcends the boundary of science and imagination. Join us as we uncover the truth behind the Niger Delta Mango Swamp mystery, a story that holds the power to reshape our perception of the natural world. Stay tuned for an exploration that will challenge what you think you know. Welcome to my channel. So a brief background about uh, myself. My name is Nvieta Basinyang. I'm a drone pilot and um, I work as a technical advisor on the Niger Delta Mangrove Restoration Project. And part of my duty is to, um, to conduct aerial surveys of um, find deforested pieces of land or areas that mangrove can be planted in our efforts to restore the population of mangrove in the Niger Delta region of Nigeria. On the 5th of August 2023, I went out for my routine um, aerial survey and it was a very uneventful day at work, um, except for the fact that it was quite windy and um, the area that I was supposed to map on the day was quite um, um, undulating in terms of topography. So I had I spent like six hours on water and it typically doesn't take that long. So aside from that, it was a very uneventful day. Up until I got back home, you know, trying to review my footage, the, the videos, the pictures, sort the images for uh, creating my auto mosaics, you know. That was when I noticed something very weird in um, the last video I was watching. Yes, I watched like 13 videos and it was only on the last one that um, something picked my interest. I noticed very straight lines uh, in the mangrove. and. I have done uh, area surveys long enough to know what human activity looks like in an area. This didn't look like human activity at all. It didn't make any sense to me. Human beings don't walk on straight lines. They don't walk on straight paths. Human beings, like the paths that human beings create always follow the route of most is, right? Like, so it will dodge trees, dodge, um, if there are potholes, it dodge potholes, you know, like they follow the easiest paths. Human beings follow the easiest path. So the human path is never straight. But these lines, we are very, very, very straight. You know, uh, I have never seen anything like that in my in my work as a drone pilot. So I knew there was something about these lines. So uh, I tried to come up with theories in my head about it. I couldn't seem to figure it out. So I reached out to um, a friend of mine who's a GIS expert and a drone pilot as well. And so um, I told him about it via a call, and then he was like, you know what, let's let's hop on it. A video call on um, the zoom call so you can share your screen and then let's see what it is so we did just that and uh, we come up with theories so the very first thing he talked about was oh this this could be um logging activity which is something that's quite common yeah it's quite common in some areas of nigeria and um, around the world generally so they will have these machines they will tie um locks together using chains and then they will drag it in a straight line to the river they'll either float it to its destination or they will load it into um, into boats or ships that can carry those logs to its destination. So that was the, that was the first um, um, theory that we came up with. But that only explains 
up until when it gets to the river. It doesn't explain how the line magically appears on the other side of the river. Like, it's a straight line. So, we know human beings don't walk across water except Jesus Christ. And we know that um, these logs don't cross to the other side. So, what machine do we have that crosses over to the other side? So, it didn't make any sense. So, we knew that we didn't have an answer to it. And so, my friend was like, you know what? What if it could be um, a defect from your camera, you know, an artifact from your, from your sensor? Um, let's look at Google Earth and see if we can identify it on Google Earth. So we went on Google Earth. We found it on Google Earth. And that was when, that was the moment we realized that we onto something very, very big because that's when we saw how extensive this thing was, you know. So we decided, okay, we've seen it on Google Earth um, as of December 2022. So let us see how far back we can go. Let's see how far back uh, we can find this thing and then to see if we can um, identify when this thing came into origin. So we went back as far as 2002. Um, that's the earliest satellite, clear satellite imagery that we have. And these structures are still there. Couldn't make any sense of it. Yes, it was crazy. So um, at that point, we stuck. So he was like, okay, you know what? Let's sleep, let's sleep over it. Um, let's reconvene tomorrow and then let's see um, if we can find anything. Um, so I went back. I couldn't sleep because I'm very curious. I like to be able to explain everything. And things that I can't explain bothers me a lot until I can find an explanation. So I couldn't sleep. So I spent the internet scanning length and breadth of the internet. I couldn't find anything like what I had seen. However, I have been... I'm a skeptic, you know, naturally, and very curious mind. I like the paranormal and I like um, to read and study about um, ancient cultures, civilizations and stuff. So there's something I read about a couple of years ago. Um, it's called the Nazca Lines of Peru. And that's the only thing that is kind of similar to what um, we are looking at currently in terms of scale. And um, the Nazca lines are only visible from above also. Yes, this brings me to another, another point. These lines are only visible from above. If you're standing on that line, you can't see it. If you're standing beside it, you can't see it. On the ground, it doesn't seem like anything because, like I said, it's not a depression on the ground. So, uh, from my idea of the Nazca lines, I figured, okay, let me try to create a pattern following these lines, you know. Let me try to see if, if it forms a pattern because the Nazca lines form patterns you know from above so I, I took my ruler tool from my google Earth pro and i went ahead and started to draw lines following these lines on the ground and man what i saw yes blew my mind so these lines form a grid perfect grids of 16 hectares each yes perfect squares 16 hectares each and spans across the okay the longest line i traced was as far as 37 kilometers from the atlantic ocean inland 37 kilometers so imagine a grid that kind of wide grid yes that's a very very wide area who did that where did that come from so um i used the images from my from my drone to create an rgb map which is called an, an, an auto mosaic and um, I confirmed these lines, very visible, as you can see. And then I said, okay, let me check the elevation. So I did the elevation map, confirming that these are not grooves, these are not depressions in the ground. They are on the same elevation as the ground around them. And lastly, I decided to do the NDVI index or NDVI toolbox, um, which is a map that shows in the clearest terms, it just shows you where you have vegetation and where you don't. Yes, so you can see in this particular map, I think this is where these lines are most obvious because you can see that these lines are bare lines. Bare lines, there's nothing grows on this piece of lines for whatever reason, we don't know yet. I'll leave my theories to the end of this video, which is why you need to watch this video to the end so it will make more sense to you. All right, so at this point, I said, okay, um, what if there are pipelines? You know, either oil or gas. So I reached out to um, a senior friend of mine who is an oil worker. I met him in person, showed him, and he said, these are not oil lines, these are not oil pipelines, because first of all, they don't crisscross each other, you know, um, they're all parallel to each other. 
and um, they are not always like this close to each other you know like this pattern that i'm seeing is not consistent with oil pipelines so the next day i remembered i had um, um a company i had worked for um they have supply gas to a lot of places across nigeria so they have gas lines so i reached out to him i have done a video call with with this client made my presentation and he was left dumbfounded you know it's like this doesn't make any sense these are not gas pipelines and he went ahead to explain why um and here's the video of that call if based on your experience in the gas um, industry um maybe you might have an idea does this seem um does this in any way look like something that has to do with gas but this is a very this is a very interesting thing and uh, for me it's an uncommon phenomenon yeah and to tell you the truth it cannot be this cannot be either crude or gas pipeline exactly. because uh, i mean i say this with, with uh, every sense of uh, confidence yeah because in our pipe our gas pipelines are regularly maintained yeah and where you know by a group of people called the green team so the green team is responsible for tracing our pipeline right of way and clearing and cutting the cutting the bushes and, and grass that yeah. grow on the pipeline right of way so yeah. you see you see what i'm talking about yeah. when the green team fails to trace the, the pipeline right of way the the path is overgrown with weed so green vegetation grows on it yeah naturally yeah because the pipeline is it, so so those are soft surface pipelines they are not exposed on the surface exactly exactly therefore therefore a human agent is needed to ensure that grass doesn't grow yes on the the right of way and that has to be done periodically so for instance if for the this entire rainy season yeah. No form of clearing the right of way is done. You will see that when, when the rainy season is over, it's over, yeah. and we we'll get to dry season. Normally, we we'll carry out extensive right of way clearance during the dry season. Yeah. When the rain has stopped, you, you can cut the grass, and you are sure that the grass will not grow back overnight. Yeah. Otherwise, everything is green. So. If you're a visitor, you can't tell which one is the, is the, is the right of way. Yeah, yeah. But the guys that do the cutting, the guys that cut the line, they know which one is because even we have the sign, we have the, the, uh, the what is it called? The, we have signages. Okay, okay. We have signages indicating, and, and I'm sure if there were pipelines, your, 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 your camera, you know, would have detected the signage because those are very visible signages. Yeah, so that cannot be. Uh, those things cannot be a pipeline. In in any case, gas pipelines are actually not straight lines. Exactly, exactly. I have to so, give an expert here. So they circumvent and circumnavigate the swampy areas or yeah. rivers or creeks. Yeah. But what we are looking at are Perfectly shaped lines. Perfectly shaped lines. And I have, I cannot naturally explain this. Now, you can hear, these are not gas lines. These are not oil gas lines. These are not. So, oil gas lines um, wouldn't explain why plants are not growing. Even if we had subterranean um, um, gas or oil pipelines, it doesn't explain why um, nothing has grown on this piece of land over two decades. As far back as we can see, it doesn't explain that. If I were to describe these lines the way I really feel about them, it seems as if they were lesser drawn from above, you know. But what technology do we know that can draw lesser lines from above or that can draw lines into the air using laser from above over such a wide area? We don't know. Another question, could, could it be um, radioactive material in this area? Who could have buried it along such a straight line that can cause plants not to grow on that line? That's another question. So at this point, um, once again, I'm left with more questions than answers. Now to my theory. Um, this could be uh, remnants of a very ancient 
civilizational technology that had existed in this area thousands of years before the current settlers or the current um, inhabitants of this land, which is us. Um, but the question is, what were these lines for? Yes, what were these lines for? So let's assume truly it's from the ancient civilization or technology, but what were the lines for? Um, second is, could this be alien activity in the area, you know, extraterrestrial activity in the area? Um, to an average human being, that doesn't make any sense. But like I said, I'm a skeptic and I've come to understand that um, this world is way more than what we are told it is, right? So that is also very, very possible, you know, because what I'm looking at, what we are looking at is not humanly possible. Human beings can't do what, but what we're looking at right now, human beings can't do this. As far as I know, human beings can't do this. I'm not aware of any technology that has the ability to do something of this size and precision. Don't forget, we're talking about grids of exactly 16 hectares each spanning 37 kilometers as long as 37 kilometers as our journey through the introduction of this mystifying video comes to a close one can't help but entertain the tantalizing possibilities that lie before us could these grid lines be remnants of an ancient civilization leaving behind a profound legacy etched into the earth or could they be the result of an otherworldly technology, an enduring testament to the mysteries of the universe? As we conclude this captivating exploration, I'm excited to share that this journey is far from over. With a test for knowledge and an unyielding determination, I pledge to continue investigating this extraordinary phenomenon through rigorous research, collaboration with experts, and the power of cutting-edge technology. I'm committed to shedding light on the truth behind these intricate grid lines. Until next time, remember, the mysteries of the world are with those who dare to seek. If you have an idea what these lines might be, drop a comment in the comment section below. Or if you know somebody or an organization that can help us to investigate this phenomenon and find an answer to these questions that we have, please drop a comment in the comment section. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe, like, share and click on that notification icon so that when i post follow-up videos you will not miss out catch you guys in the next video cheers